Today I want to take us through how to install Diablo 2 Resurrected on a Linux machine, um, specifically Arch Linux. Uh, we're, the program we're going to be using is called Lutris. Lutris kind of acts as a front-end hub for a lot of different video game clients, including uh, Battle.net and Steam and uh, Good Old Games, I believe it's called. And it provides some back-end support too, especially for 3D rendering um, that is proprietary for Windows. So it provides some makeshift uh, DirectX um, compatibility layers through Lutris. So to go ahead and get started, uh, you can see I've got a couple of tabs here open on my browser. Uh, first tab here is the GitHub for Lutris, uh, specifically about their distribution specific uh, packages that you need to install. The second one over here are um, drivers for your graphics card, including NVIDIA, Intel, or AMD. So to get started, go ahead and open up these two tabs. I'll include the links in the description of the video uh, and open up a terminal. So I've got my terminal open here. The first thing we need to do, actually let's just split the screen. The first thing we need to do, I'm on Arch, so you're gonna have to scroll down on the um, packages tab. Scroll down to where it says Arch, Manjaro, other Arch derivatives. Um, first thing we have to do is an enable the multi-lib uh, in our mirror list. So that command is going to be sudo vim, install vim if you don't already have it. And we're looking for this file right here in the etc directory. So it's going to be forward slash etc forward slash pacman.conf. Type in your password, hit enter. You'll be greeted with this. Go ahead and hit page down or scroll down until you see multi-lib. Now you can already see that I have this uncommented. Yours might have these little um, comments or hashtags in front of them. Closing them off might look like this. So if it looks like this, you come down to multi-lib. Hit I to go into insert mode. Delete those comments. Hit escape. Hit colon. WQ to write and quit. And we'll have written the changes. At this point, we need to update our repository, so that command is going to be sudo pacman-syy. Let that run. And the multi-lib repository should now be added. After that, we need to execute the following command here. This is going to get us uh, Lutris, as well as all the necessary uh, dependencies that Lutris requires in order to operate. So that is just a simple copy. Control shift V to paste it in and let that run. Now usually I don't recommend just copying and pasting a large command from the internet with sudo privileges. Uh, that's generally a bad idea because you don't really know if you don't really know what that command is doing or the packages that command is installing you can get into some pretty tricky situations uh, and some potential dangerous situations. Uh, that being said, I do trust Lutris and I do trust their uh, proprietary GitHub. And so I've run this package on a couple of different systems. I've never had an issue with it, or this command rather. I've never had an issue with it. It's always been fine. And the fact that we're pulling from the official repositories and not the AUR kind of gives me a little bit more um, comfort or security. So again, I don't recommend usually just copying and pasting, especially if it's from a forum you don't trust. But in this case, I've done it enough. I trust where it's coming from. So that's where we're at. OK, so the package is just finished downloading and installing. Go ahead and clear the terminal with Control L, or you can type in clear. The second thing we're going to need to do is come over to the um, graphics cards support tab. And we're going to scroll down to where it says Arch Manjaro and other Arch derivatives here. We've already enabled the multi-lib um, repository. So now we just need to find the command that corresponds with our graphics card. If you've got an NVIDIA card, this is your command here. An AMD card, this is your command here. I have integrated graphics, so I'm running it on an Intel machine. So this is going to be my command here. Again, you'll just copy whatever corresponds to your graphics card. And then we're going to paste that into our terminal and let that run. OK, 
Okay, that's finished running. At this point, we have uh, Lutris and all of its dependencies and our Vulkan support for our graphics card all installed. We can close our tabs out. And we can close our terminal. And now, actually, we shouldn't have closed our tab or our terminal. We need to install Lutris. So that command is going to be sudo pacman s Lutris. Go ahead and type in your password and let that run. OK, Lutris has just finished installing. Now we can go ahead and close our terminal, open up Lutris. It might take a second uh, for everything to boot up, especially on a slower machine like mine. OK, so Lutris finished loading. Um, this is the default splash screen that you'll be greeted with. We're going to come over here, since we don't have any games in our library yet, we're going to come over here to uh, the Lutris source. We're going to click on that, and we're going to search for the Battle.net Community Installer. So you have two tabs here, Library and Community Installer. Make sure you have Community Installer selected and search for Battle.net. Now you're going to want to install Battle.net through the Community Installer and not through um, Blizzard's website. Don't download the EXE and install it that way. The uh, Battle.net Community Installer is already pre-configured. Uh, there's a little bit of a tweaking we need to do afterward, but you want to download the Community Installer. So click on that. Click on Install. It's going to say, uh, before you install, make sure you visit our um, GitHub for installing our drivers and our um, dependencies that are required. We've already done that. So at this point, we can move on. If you run into functionality issues, you have the option to go to their GitHub slash Lutris slash Blizzard app. That might be something you have to troubleshoot on your own. But for our video, I haven't had to do it. Um, just your mileage may vary. So go ahead and click Install. It's going to ask you to select your um, directories. You can just hit Install, do the default one. That's going to take a minute to run as it downloads um, the, the Wine driver, which we'll get to later. And then after the Wine driver installs, we're going to uh, have to go through a couple of different installation protocols to get the final exe installed so there are some needed packages here they're already set to download if you want to point these in certain directions you can by clicking it and selecting your own file i leave these all on download it's going to download a font and a couple of different packages um, that we're going to be using later let's go ahead and let that run it's going to take us through the wine configuration we're going to hit install it's going to take a second to download And now that uh, the wine has been installed, now we're going to actually be installing the Battle.net client. So this usually takes a good amount of time. Um, I might speed this portion of the video up, but eventually we'll be greeted with the um, what looks like the Windows.exe uh, Battle.net client installer. So as this continues to run in the background, you'll see we have the Battle.net um, client installer, what looks like the Windows version, updating and installing on this end while we have, it looks like some command prompt stuff going down here on this window. So here's the installer for Battle.net. Um, I turn this off, launch Battle.net when you start your computer because I prefer to just launch it directly from Lutris. Um, I've never actually tried to keep that selected. So if you do, you might run into issues. I'm just not aware. Uh, I leave that unchecked. Unchecked. Uh, so I hit continue at this point. It's going to install the Battle.net client. Okay, the Battle.net client just finished installing. You have the option here to create a desktop shortcut and then create an application menu shortcut. I leave both of these unselected again because I prefer to launch it straight from Lutris. So at this point, you can launch Battle.net, but we're not going to do that yet. Go ahead and hit close. We need to do a little bit more configuring. So back here in Lutris, we need to install a different version of Wine. Uh, at least I've had to install a dis different version of Wine in order to get the game running. So we're going to come over here to Runners and select Wine and click this little icon that looks like three squares with a down arrow. 
that's going to give us different wine versions that we can install and use on our system. The wine version I use is this second one here. It might be in a different spot on your computer, I'm not sure, but it's Lutris-GE and whatever the most current version is. Uh, this is the one I was able to get um, Diablo 2 working with. So you might have to experiment, you might have to do you know, some Googling on your own to find one that works for you. Uh, I, I saw or on a forum that someone recommend using this one and it worked for my system. Linux and gaming are kind of still a little bit in the wild west um, in terms of support. It's not really as fluid as Windows is, um, not even really as seamless and fluid as Mac is, depending on the game, uh, but it is making progress. That being said, a lot of this stuff, you know, we can use videos like mine or videos other people are putting out to kind of give you a, a jumping off point for getting these games configured on your system. But so much is just fine tuned by the end user that it's kind of impossible to make a one size fits all video to get everyone up and running. So when I say this Lutris-GE-16.6.16-1 works for me, it might not work for you. The important thing that you can take away from this is there are other versions of wine that you can use with Lutris in order to get different levels of support for the game you're trying to get running. So now that that's installed, hit OK. We're going to come back here to Lutris. We're going to click on Battle.net and we're going to click on this little up caret right next to play. And we're going to go to configure. Come over here to the runner options tab and now from this wine version drop down we can select the version of wine we just installed Lutris-GE-6.16-1. Go ahead and select that, click save and now we can boot uh, Battle.net for the first time. So go ahead and hit play. It'll ask you, well it'll give you a little wine prompt first, maybe even a wine system tray depending on the system you're running. So here's my wine system tray up in the corner, and we have the Battle.net client right here. Go ahead and log in to your um, Battle.net client. I'm going to leave this out for this portion of the video. And now we've booted into the Battle.net client. So real quick, if you get hung up on the login, if for whatever reason it says, um, we couldn't connect to the Battle.net servers to log you in. Do you want to continue anyway offline? It took me a while to find out what was wrong with that. I had from the um, Arch official repositories, I had their version of Wine installed instead of Wine-staging. So if you're running into that issue, it's probably because you have an older version of Wine or a different version of Wine. Make sure you install the Wine-staging package and remove the old version of Wine from your uh, computer. As you're running that command in your terminal, you might get prompted like, "Do you, or Wine and Wine staging are in conflict. Do you want to remove Wine? Make sure you hit yes to remove the old version of Wine and install Wine staging, and that should get you to log in successfully. So I'm logged in here. It says, welcome to Battle.net. This is the first time I'm launching it on this computer. We don't need to watch or do the tutorial or the walkthrough. Um, I'm going to come over here to Diablo 2 Resurrected and I'm going to install Diablo 2. Now this is going to take a good amount of time so I'm going to cut to when this is already installed. So on your end just hit install. Um, you can leave everything default here. It requires 30 gigabytes and then just start installation. So I'll meet you back here when this is done installing. Okay Diablo 2 just finished installing. Um, from here, we can go ahead and launch the game. So as the game is launching, it might take a second for everything to start to render. Eventually, you'll see these title screens, which you can blow past. And then you're going to get um, probably stuck at this black screen where you can see your gauntlet cursor and the Diablo 2 logo kind of just circling at the bottom. My computer gets hung up here for a good amount of time before the graphics finally render. Um, I've read reports online that some people never make it past this point. Uh, so give it a couple of minutes, see if you can get past that hang on your system, and then the game should run as normal. 
But if you can't get past that hang, you're gonna have to do some Google sleuthing on your own to figure out what compatibility issue is going on with your system. It's either a driver issue or it's um, a Vulkan support for DiveX issue. It may even be a wine configuration issue. Again, unfortunately, one size doesn't really fit all, especially with Linux gaming. So these videos can work to kind of show you what your options are, but again, they might not get you all the way to the finish line. So um, hopefully this was enough to get you going. Again, this is working on my system. I'm running Arch with proprietary Intel driver, uh, or proprietary, yeah, Intel drivers uh, and integrated graphics. It's not the most powerful system, which is why you know my graphics look kind of crappy on the screen. Um, but again, it's enough to get me playing the game on uh, Linux, and hopefully it's enough to get you guys playing as well on Linux. Uh, thank you guys for checking out the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you were able to get Diablo 2 launched, and I'll see you in the next one.